to obtain a sample of DNA to amplify and test using PCR analysis, we are sampling the inside of our volunteer's mouth with a sterile swab. Welcome. In this basic bite, we will be discussing what PCR is, how it works, and the sorts of equipment that's used to perform the analysis. Once back at the bench, the swab is transferred to a new sterile tube and then the tip of the swab is immersed in sterile water. It is vital to ensure that all reagents and equipment that come into contact with the sample DNA are sterile so as not to contaminate the PCR results. Adding the sterile water will allow us to extract the DNA from the swab using a commercially available DNA extraction kit and once complete, will provide us with our sample DNA to perform PCR analysis upon. Once we have our extracted DNA sample, known as the template, we will start to assemble a range of reagents which constitutes a PCR mix into a sterile tube. This typically takes the form of a master mix containing a coloured dye for loading, which is mixed with the template DNA and is made up of the following components. A DNA polymerase, deoxynucleotide triphosphates, specific primers forward and reverse, buffer and magnesium chloride salt. Let us examine in detail what happens in a PCR reaction once placed in a thermocycler machine. Each of the compounds we have just mentioned is seen here to be placed into our virtual tube, leading us to the first step of the PCR process, denaturation. This occurs in the PCR machine where a mixture is heated to over 90 degrees, forcing the template DNA to separate. The next step, known as the annealing step, allows the polymerase and specific primers to access each of the single DNA strands in order to initiate replicating another strand from each of them. In the extension phase, deoxynucleotide triphosphates act as building blocks to extend the newly synthesized DNA strands, thereby doubling the quantity of starting DNA each cycle. As you can see, as this process repeats, we are doubling our DNA each time. This is the basis of PCR. With each new cycle, the process of denaturation, annealing and extension repeats again and again. By this process of constant synthesis, the number of DNA molecules in the tube increases exponentially with each cycle, so that after only 35 cycles, there are many millions of DNA molecules now amplified by the PCR process. In order to analyse a newly synthesised DNA, it is necessary to prepare an agarose gel for electrophoresis. The liquid molten gel is poured into the casting rig, which will set the cooling gel into a semi-solid state, ready for the DNA to be loaded onto it. As part of the casting rig, a comb, highlighted in the video, is placed to allow the setting gel to form around it and mould lanes in which the DNA will be placed. After the gel has cooled, a quick check is needed to make sure it is semi-solid. At this point, the set gel is placed in the electrophoresis chamber and immersed in conductive buffer. Then the comb is removed to allow loading of the DNA from the PCR reactions into the newly formed wells. Once the thermocycler has run the required number of cycles, Samples are removed from the machine, ready for loading onto the gel. Using a micropipette, small volumes of between 2 and 10 microliters of the individual PCR reactions are very carefully loaded into the wells formed in the gel by the comb. This is a very tricky skill to master, as taking the pipette tip into the gel too far will perforate it and not putting the tip in far enough will cause your sample to float away and be lost. Practice is a key to ensuring repetitive and complete loading of DNA samples every time. Wells are sometimes hard to see under the buffer, and for illustration purposes we have highlighted them in each case with the red ovals. Agarose is a long polysaccharide molecule that forms a semi-solid gel matrix used for separation of DNA according to size. 
DNA carries a negative charge, meaning that when exposed to an electrical field in the electrophoresis tank, it will migrate towards a positive terminal. Typically, a standard series of DNA fragments of previously known length, called the DNA ladder, is also run with the samples to allow for direct size comparisons. The main use of PCR in medicine is as a diagnostic tool. The ability of PCR to amplify specific regions of DNA from very small quantities, thanks to the way PCR works, and the inclusion of specific DNA primers in the mix, means that even tiny amounts of DNA from pathogens such as viruses can be detected. Once the gel has been fully loaded with a sample DNA from the thermocycler, the power supply is attached and a current is passed across the electrophoresis unit to allow the DNA to separate as previously discussed. After a period of time under electrical current, the power pack is switched off. These days, PCR sample dyes have two colours, seen in the film as yellow and blue, which can be used as a rough measure of how far the DNA is run through the gel, without having to constantly check by removing the gel from the tank. It is now time to visualise our results. With great care, the gel cradle is removed from the electrophoresis apparatus. This is because a compound which allows DNA to fluoresce upon exposure to ultraviolet light was included as part of the gel. This compound is known as ethidium bromide and is a severe irritant in a known carcinogen. Care must be taken when handling the gel due to inclusion of this compound. Placing the gel in an ultraviolet light box allows us to visualise the PCR products we have been generating alongside our DNA ladder as they fluoresce. We can see here that our PCR analysis has indeed worked, as there are visible DNA bands fluorescing. As an example of PCR results you might observe, we show a gel which contains a DNA ladder, both a positive and a negative control, with some patient samples also included. We hope this latest Keo Basic Byte has promoted an interest in this powerful analytical technique. Wow.